Shalom, Israel. Shalom, peace and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel. Scott of the Broad and Brother Aram Allah. Coming back to you guys with another powerful lesson in the spirit, man. So, of course, today's lesson will be on the new moon. As you can see right here, I got this little cool little app open right now. It's called That Piff. That Piff. Look, look where I'm at. I mean, That Moon. Daff Moon Phases. Daff Moon Phases. Um, D-A-F-F -F Moon Phases. You know what I'm saying? Pretty cool app, man. It, uh... You know, provides you a lot of information, man, as you can see. Goes into the sun, the planet, you know, the sky. It gives you all type of stuff, man. So, it's a pretty cool app, man. Definitely should check it out. Got a lot of pertinent information you can see over here as I scroll down to the right. Um, So, today is April 21st, right? It's about 9.40 p.m., you know. So, this is real time. P.M., A.M., I mean, damn, yeah, man, I don't know where I'm at with it today, man. Salanki, Israel, man, I'm kind of tired. But, you know, still got to bring it out, man. Bring out the edification for Israel. So, y'all bear with me a little bit. So, today is April 21st, 2020, right? 9.40 a.m., right? So, we doing this in real time. And you can look to your left. We see we still waning. So, we got a crescent of light, about 1.8% of illumination. So we still waning, which means subtracting the light until we get to that full 0% no light. You know what I'm saying? 0% no light. That will officially be a new moon, right? So let's go ahead and get into the scriptures, you know what I mean, to provide edification. You know, we always got to start off with the scriptures, man. Um, the Lord said, prove everything, you know what I mean, through his word. So we go through the word. Um, we stand on this Bible first and foremost before we do any apps, you know what I mean? I love the app because it kind of help you, you know, as you follow along to observe things and keep our feeds correctly. But the Bible is first and foremost our premise and what we go by, right? So let's go to the scripts. Ecclesiastes chapter 43 verse 6, it says, He made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times, right? So we see right here, let me highlight it. Um... The moon is our calendar, you know. You see that right here. The scripture says it, right? Ecclesiastes 43 and 6. So the moon is our calendar, as you can see. We uh don't go according to the Gregorian calendar or anything that Esau says. We go according to the moon. The moon is our calendar, right? Clear cut right there, right? <laughs> so with that, let's go ahead and get to the law. Numbers 10 and 10 is a precept I love to go to because it's the first time you actually see us observing a new moon, right? So, Numbers 10 and 10, it says, Also in the days of your gladness and in your solemn days and in the beginning of your months, right? So, let me hold it right there. Highlight this. In the beginning of your months, right? When you see beginning of your months, that literally means new moon, right? That means the same thing. In the beginning of your months means new moon. How do we know that? Let's go ahead and get the Hebrew understanding of it, right? So, we go to my Bible sword app, right? I already got it highlighted for y'all. You see right here, Numbers 10 and 10, right? Cool thing about this app that lets you read along and have the Hebrew understanding of each word as you read along. So we see, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to read it from the top. So number 10 and 10. Also in your day of your gladness and in your solemn days and in me, the beginning of your months. You see, in your months, you get H23 is already highlighted. 2320. Let's click on it. H2320 means Kodesh, which literally means the new moon. <laughs> New moon means new month. So when you see new month or beginning of months, it literally means new moon. Same thing. So new month means new moon, right? Clear cut, right? But look, here's the cool thing about it. So it has an origin, right? So we go to that origin. That origin is H2318, which means Kardash. Kardash, which literally means to be new. To repair, right? So let's go to the Strongs. It says to be new, right? Come on, man. Click to be new. Causively to repair, to renew, you know what I'm saying? To rebuild. So we see clearly right here that the scholars, you know, what they were trying to articulate when they, when they had the word new moon or new month whenever you see that right h2318 it literally means to start from scratch it means to rebuild it means to start from the beginning right so how, how do we know that the new moon starts in a dark space let's go to the beginning let's go to the scriptures right let's go to genesis in the very beginning and let's see what it says right go 
Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, right? Everybody heard that scripture before, I'm sure. Verse 2, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness, <laughs> see, darkness was first, right? Darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of the Most High moved upon the face of the waters, right? And the Most High said, let there be light. So we see light second, clear cut, right? I'm going to go back a couple just to prove all things through the Spirit, right? Darkness first, right? Then comes the light, right? Clear cut, right? So, oh, man, you know, it's a lot of crazy doctors out there. So it's imperative that, you know, I bring it out through the precepts, man. Let the Most High be the truth and every man a liar, man. So I'm, I'm going to give you a couple more precepts, man. So y'all bear with me. I want y'all to write them down so y'all can have the ammunition to compact. A lot of this madness, man. Acts 26, verse 18, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, man. So we always was in darkness first, and then we got introduced to this life and this truth. We was in darkness, and then what? We got the light. We got the truth, man. We got the light, and Christ is the personification of that light, right? Um, Let's get one more. Let's get one more. I don't want to be the dead horse, but I want to bring it out, man, just to combat all these evil, wicked, crazy doctrines out here in Israel, man. So a lot of them, man. We're going to let the precepts speak. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to let the word of God be the truth and every man a liar. So this is Leviticus 23 and 32. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest. Ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even, from even to even, right? So this is Day of Atonement, but... I wanted to bring this out just to let you know the Lord always start things in evening, you know what I mean, in a dark space. And evening literally means dark from night, pitch black dark, right? How do we know that? It's proven in the spirit, man. Write down these precepts, Israel, so y'all can have the ammunition to combat these wicked doctrines. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 9, in the twilight, in the evening, in the black, dark night. In the black, dark night. So evening means black, dark night. So now we got that understanding. We go back to Leviticus 23. So when we get from even to evening, it literally means from the pitch black, dark night to the pitch black, dark night. Real cut, right? <laughs> so let's prove it a little bit more, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm going go, to beat a dead horse a little bit because I want to bury these crazy doctrines. But I also want to provide edification for Israel because there's a lot of brothers and sisters coming in the truth. The Lord pour down his Holy Spirit. So I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't um if I didn't come out here and you know provide edification for Israel. So go to the book Ecclesiastes 39. We're gonna read verse 12. This is another cut right here. It says, Yet have I more to say which I have thought upon, for I am filled. Look at this. For I'm filled as the moon at full. So, feel means to be completely illuminated, completely having all your light. You know what I'm saying? Feel as the moon at full. So, look, this is a question that you have to ask to these brothers with these crazy doctrines. You know what I mean? The brothers that actually had these crazy doctrines. If the new moon was lit up, right, then why didn't it say right here in Ecclesiastes 39, 39 and 12, I am full, I'm filled as the moon at new. Why does this say full? Because the full moon is the full moon and the new moon is the new moon. Completely two different things. The full moon is when it's completely lit up. New moon is when it's completely dark. We already proved that, but I'm going to give you another precept. I'm going to give you one more precept, man, just to bury these crazy doctrines in the spirit. Um, Ecclesiastes 50, verse 6. It says, this is cut. I don't know how you go around this one right here. It's a clean cut right here. It says, Ecclesiastes 50, verse 6. He was as the morning star in the midst of a cloud and as the moon at full. <laughs> he was as the morning star. What is the morning star? Yahweh Shai, the light, right? Yahweh Shai is the light in the midst of the cloud. As the moon at full, let you know the full moon is when it's completely lit up. And new moon is when it's completely dark, man. So, Lord said prove all things. I think we did a phenomenal job proving that, you know, with, a, uh, you know, about five or six precepts. So, moving along. So, how often do we observe 
the new moon. Like, how often should we observe it? Let's go ahead and get uh First Kings chapter four, verse seven. Prove it. First Kings chapter four, verse seven from the top. And Solomon had twelve officers, right? So this is important to see. Twelve, all right. Twelve officers over all Israel, which provided victuals for the king and his households. Each man his month in a year made provision. So we see twelve officers, right? And each man had a month right here in a year. So how many months in a year? Twelve months in a year. It's beautiful. See, the Lord said all the systems and things that we see in the functions based on Yasha'Allah in Jerusalem. So everything is based on Jerusalem and Yasha'Allah, man, which is beautiful, man. That's to show you how much the Lord loves us. So it's twelve months in a year, man. So we keep what? How many new moons? We're going to keep 12. <laughs> We're going to serve it. We're going to keep it 12. So how many days in a month? That should be the next question, right? So we know we keep 12 new moons a year, right? So how many days in a month? That should be the next question, right? How many moon phases? How many moon phases or how many days is in a month? Genesis chapter 7, verse 11 will help you out with that. So we get the book of Genesis chapter 7, verse 11, and it reads, in the 600 year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day. So this is very, very important to highlight. When the Lord flooded the earth and killed everybody except Noah and his family. Um, you see, he began, you know, to flood the earth on the second month, on the 17th day of the month, right? So he began on the second month, on the 17th day of the month, right? Very, very important to highlight, right? So we're going to go back. This is when he started, you know, to flood the earth. And look, we go in the same chapter and we go down to verse 24 and we see it was 150 days duration, right? It says, and the waters prevailed upon the earth in 150 days. So it was 150 day duration of rain, right? Um, So let's go to the next chapter, chapter 8. We want verse 3. And it says, and the water returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of the 150 days, the waters were abated. So there's another precept to let you know. It stopped raining 150 days, man. That's when the waters was abated and everything started clearing up. Um, Verse 4, and the ark rested on the seventh month on the 17th day. So remember, it started on the second month on the 17th day, and it ended on the seventh month on the 17th day of the month. So what is that a duration of? 150 days, right? And it was a, a, a difference of... Five months, right? How do we know that? We we subtract seven from two we give us five, right? It started on the second month, ended on the seventh month, so seven minus two you get five, and it was 150 days. 150 days, let's go ahead and get the calendar, right? 150 divided by five months will give you 30 days a month. So we know for a fact that there's 30 days in a month. So let's go ahead and get our little moon app again. Right, and let's prove all things through the scriptures, right? So today is April 21st. Um, so right, it's like 9 52 a.m. right now, almost 10 a.m. I'm gonna go over one day because the new moon is tomorrow, sundown. So I'm gonna go over one day. So one day now we're on Wednesday. So now I'm gonna use the second little tab, the little arrow, and we're going to go by the hour until we get to a new moon. Complete got to be completely zero. So we had a new moon now, right? So new moon comes in around tomorrow, Wednesday, around like almost like 4 p.m. You see that, right? So that that sundown, we'll we'll be turning up. We'll be getting it in and bringing in our new moon. So we see we got a new moon around 4 p.m. Let's just say 4 p.m. Let's round up to 4 p.m. Right? Now we're gonna test it. We're gonna count 30 days from here. And we're going to see, do we have another moon? Let's see if this app add up with the scriptures, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. 24, 25, 26, 27, 
28, 29, 30. Right on point, right? So this app lines up with the scripture, you know what I mean? The Lord cannot lie. It's impossible. You know what I'm saying? He said it's 30 days in a month. We just prove that through the spirit, right? We use the app to prove it. So clear cut right there, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, for the brothers that's going out there, you're talking about it's 31 days, it's 35 days, it's 33 days. Bro, let the Lord be the truth and every man a lie. There's a lot of powerful brothers out here that's mis, you know, mis misappropriating the scriptures. You know what I'm saying? They're coming up with doctrines just not according to the scriptures, man. So we got to keep everything to the scripts, man. So we see that, right? <clears throat> so we're going to go back to our scriptures. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to go back to Numbers 10 and 10 because I want to show y'all how do we celebrate it. Right. So Numbers 10 and 10, it says also in the days of your gladness and in your solemn days and in the beginning of your months, you should blow the trumpet. So we have to blow the trumpet, set off the alarm. Right. We set off the alarm and let everybody know, hey, it's a new moon. It's a celebration over your burnt offerings. That goes in the aspects of cooking and over your sacrifices and over your peace offerings that you may be that it may be a to you a memorial. So this is a memorial. To the heavenly father you know what i'm saying what is a memorial is memory you know what i'm saying bringing memory you know and praise to the heavenly father so this is absolutely a memorial a feast a festive type of you know situation man in which we give thanks and it's a sabbath how do we know it's a sabbath too new moons of sabbath we go to the book of amos chapter 8 verse 5 and it says amos 8 and 5 saying when will the new moon Y'all see that right here, right? When will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn and the Sabbath <laughs> that we may set for wheat? So it's letting you know clear cut right here that the new moon is a Sabbath. So you treat it like a Sabbath, like in terms of not buying and selling, but you are allowed to cook. It's not like the weekly Sabbath when you can't cook. We just prove that with your burnt offerings. So you bring your burnt offerings, which is your cookings. You bring those things to this feast. And you turn up and you have a good time. You know what I'm saying? So you are allowed to cook on the new moon. You know what I mean? But it's a savage. So you don't buy, sell. You don't work. You don't have. If you got a business, you don't have people work. Everybody's off on that day. Okay? This is this is a holy convocation. It's a holy day. You know what I'm saying? And we turn up in the spirit. Um, I want to I want to bring out another point. Um, you know, our foremother Judith, she was solid sister in the scriptures. Um, I want to bring her out real quick. <clears throat> just to show you how she was moving, right? We're going to bring out Judah chapter 8, verse 4. It says, so Judah was a widow in her house three years and four months, right? Verse 5, and she made her a tent, a tent upon the house, on the top of her house, and put on sackcloth upon her loins and wore her widow apparel. And she fasted, all the days of her widowhood, except the eaves of the Sabbaths and the Sabbaths and the eaves of the new moon and the new moons. So I want to highlight the new moon. So I just want to show you how our foremother Judith would fast pretty much every day of her widowhood because she was, you know, sad that her husband died, except for the Sabbaths, new moons and high holy days. Why is that? Because you're not supposed to bring, be in a state of mourning and, you know, being down on the Lord's Day. You know what I'm saying? You got other days to do that. On the Lord's Day, you got to put aside all your sorrows, put aside all your little, you know, personal issues and give reverence and thanks to the Lord. This is not a time for mourning. This is not a time for, you know, um, crying and, you know, being down. This is a time to be uh, praising the Lord, you know what I mean, for anything, you know what I mean? A healthy wife, a healthy baby, a healthy life, you know what I'm saying? Having breath in your lungs, you know what I mean? Thankful for your father and mother. Thank you for your brother, you know what I'm saying? This is a time where you want to be turned. You don't want to be all down and sluggish and slouches. You know, you can do other days to, to do that because the Lord told you it's times for that. But this is not the time for that. When it's a new moon, this is about the Lord. So I'm going to get Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. It says, to everything there is a season. And a time to every purpose in the heaven. So there's time for, you know, to be mourning and all that and being down and, you know, putting on sackcloth and fasting and stuff like that. <laughs> right. Verse four, it says it right here. A time to weep. So it's a time to cry. You know what I'm saying? It's a time to be, you know, um, reminiscing on the past, you know, um, thinking about your forefathers and, you know, some of the things you might have went through. It's a time for that. And a time to laugh. See, it's a time to laugh. Right. 
a time to mourn and a time to dance. So new moons is for the Lord, and this is the time to turn up. It's the time to dance. It's the time to laugh. It's the time to be, you know, in your back, man, you know, giving praise and reverence to the Father. This ain't the time to be down and sluggish and be, oh, shalom, you know, I really don't want to be here, you know. I'm just here because I have to be. No, that's not the spirit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You want to make sure you come in the spirit, the right spirit, and be in a, a, a good spirit. You know what I'm saying? Giving praise and honor to the Heavenly Father, right? <laughs> so this is a time to turn up. It's a time to laugh. It's a time, you know, to have some music, man. Let me go ahead and um get that preset real quick. I believe it's in, yeah, First Samuel. Here we go right here. First Samuel chapter 18, verse 6. And it came to pass as they came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines that the woman came out of all the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with temperance, with joy and with instruments of music. You see what I'm saying? So when we turned up and we had festivities and, you know, events, we turned up with temperance and music and we was, you know, we was live. We had, you know, the live band going, you know what I'm saying? We had some dancing, you see right here, right? We had music. <laughs> so these are the type of things you want to have at your feast. It's the environment you want to have. You want to make sure you're having, you know, a real festive type of environment. You don't want it to be morning and, you know, quiet and down. You want it to be turned up because, you know, we're giving praise and a memorial and a thanks to the Father. You know what I'm saying? This is a memory of our Heavenly Father who is above all things. Oh, man, man. All praises to the Heavenly Father. Um, Let's get some more. Let's get another one. Let's get another one, man. We'll go to the Apocrypha. Let's get this one in First Ezra's. First Ezra's chapter 4, verse 63. To go up and to build Jerusalem and the temple, which is called by his name, and they feasted, right? So when we feast, right? When we when we in our feast bag, look, with instruments of music and gladness seven days, man. You see what I'm saying? When we feasted in Jerusalem, we turned up, man. We had like long, long parties. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> parties was lit from seven days feast. You know what I'm saying? So this is the type of bag we supposed to be in. This is the type of energy we supposed to bring to the Lord's feast. You see what I'm saying? When we feasting, we having a festive type of environment. We having music. We glad. We giving praise and honor to our Heavenly Father. You see what I'm saying? Because it's a memorial and memory of Him. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you want to have you some music. Definitely want to get you some wine, you know what I'm saying? What's a feast without wine? Let me go ahead and get that one, that preset real quick. Of course, in moderation, man. You don't want to, you don't want to OD on no damn wine, man. Because, you know, Lord said, you know, you want to make sure you do everything um, in decency and order, man. You know, keep things in order, man. But uh, the Lord said it right here. Book of Ecclesiastes, verse 10. So like Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 9, it says a feast right here is made for laughter and wine make it merry. So wine make things, you know, a whole lot better, man. You know, you getting 40, 50, 60 hour work weeks, you know, and, and, and drained by Esau and his kingdom. You know what I'm saying? And this wicked world, how he got us going. When we get to the point where we celebrating the Lord's feast, man, we, we go ahead and we turn up and we have fun and, you know, we in the spirit. You know what I mean? We got a little wine in our system. We feeling good. You see what I'm saying? For those that can drink and all that. We feeling good. It's a festive type of environment. So I just want to continue to emphasize that because this is how our forefathers was moving. They wasn't turned down. They wasn't in no, no slouchy type of spirit. You know what I'm saying? They was in a real, real fun spirit, man. So I'm going to go back to Numbers 10 and 10. And, um... Probably get one more precept after that to cap it off. It says, number 10 and 10. Also in the days of your gladness and in your solemn days and in the beginning of your months, so your new moons right here, right? You should blow with the trumpet. So we set off the alarm later where, you know, over your burnt offerings, you know what I'm saying? Over your food, you know, and the things that you bring in your cookings and over your sacrifices and peace offerings that you may be, that they may be to you for a memorial before the most high. I am the most high of power, right? So this is why we do this. I'm going to cap it off with this one. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. This is why we turn up and we be uh, glad and, you know, thankful and praising the Lord in this situation. Because Paul reminded us, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Whether therefore ye eat, right, or drink, or whatsoever you do, do all things 
to the glory of the Most High, man. Yahweh Bashem Omashiach Yahweh Shai, man. Ka Hala Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. So we give all prayers and honor to the Heavenly Father, man. This is why we do it, man. Most High willing, you was edify Israel. You know what I'm saying? Feel free to comment below any questions. Um, I think it was pretty simplified right here. We see clear cut, you know, new moon begins in a dark state. Um, full moon is when it's completely illuminated and lit, according to the scriptures and science. Um, we have uh, 30 days in a month. We have uh, 12 uh, months in a year. You see what I'm saying? So we observe this 12 times a year, man. In the spirit, we brought it out. Feel free to comment below if you have anything else, you know what I mean, you want to ask. Feel free to comment below. But I think this video pretty much answers everything in the spirit. Giving all honor and praise to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shalom.